on behalf of Indian Council of World Affairs, I would like to welcome you all for the event to commemorate Africa Day. Allow me to brief you about the program. First is book launch and discussion. Then we'll break for tea. It will be followed by a panel discussion. After the panel discussion, we would like to invite all the heads of missions and panelists to join us for a group photo on the stairs. It will be followed by lunch. To start off the proceedings, I would like to invite DG of ICW, Ambassador Vijay Thakur Singh, to deliver welcome remarks. Sri Harshwardhan Shringla, G20 Chief Coordinator and former Foreign Secretary, Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, distinguished diplomat and author of the book, Sri Damuravi, Secretary Economic Relations, Ministry of External Affairs, other officers from the Ministry of External Affairs, members of the Association of Indian Diplomats, heads of mission, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to thank Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs, Shri V. Murli Dharanji, for his message on Africa Day 2022. ICWA has a history of commemorating Africa Day, and today, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the commemoration of Africa Day. I would like to especially thank the ambassadors of Africa who have joined us. It is your presence that makes the ICWA commemorative event significant and meaningful. ICWA has been promoting India-Africa relations. In 2002, an Africa Center was set up in ICWA, and we have been making conscious efforts to develop scholarly research and understanding of Africa in India and of India in Africa. Last Tuesday, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar was in the Council to launch the book, India-Africa Relations, Changing Horizons. Today, we are launching the book of Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, an ICWA publication, The Harambe Factor, India-Africa Economic and Development Partnership. These two book launches within a week underscore the importance that ICWA attaches to Africa. Ambassador Gurjeet Singh's book is a detailed study on a subject on which there are very few studies, and it is a welcome input to the understanding of India's growing engagement with Africa. During his diplomatic career, Ambassador Gurjeet Singh has served in Africa for many years and in divisions in the Ministry of External Affairs dealing with Africa. He has played an instrumental role in deepening and expanding our engagement with Africa. While congratulating Ambassador Gurjeet Singh for the book, we would also like to commend him for the tremendous efforts undertaken and the meticulous research done. The book discussion moderated by Secretary E.R. Damuravi will undoubtedly bring to the fore the importance of the book. The G20 pandemic and the current situation in Ukraine underscore the need to pay greater attention to issues to food and health security. Today's panel discussion on the theme of health and food security in Africa and in this context, India-Africa cooperation will be an important panel discussion. Former Secretary E.R. Rahul Chabra will moderate the session in which ambassadors of Djibouti, Ethiopia, Morocco, CDA of Madagascar and Minister Councillor of Ghana will participate. Africa Agenda 2063 contains the aspirations of Africa and provides a framework for India-Africa development cooperation. In 2018, when Prime Minister uh, was in uh, Uganda, he had laid down 10 guiding principles of India's Africa policy. He said, and I quote, our development partnership will be guided by your priorities, unquote. India's development assistance comes without any conditionality. It is demand-driven and seeks to achieve mutual benefit through a consultative process. Our partnership is strong and reliable, and I'm confident that it will continue to grow. Thank you so much for your attention. Africa Day Lecture, to mark the occasion, we will hear this video message sent by Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs, Shri V. Murli Dharan.
Ambassador Vijay Thakur Singh, Director General Indian Council of World Affairs, Sri Harshavardhan Shanglaji, G20 Coordinator, Ambassador Gurjit Singh Ji, Sri Dammu Revi, Secretary Economic Relations, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am delighted to join the August gathering today to celebrate Africa Day 2022. I congratulate ICWA for organizing a book launch, book discussion, and a panel discussion on this occasion. I commend Ambassador Gurjit Singh Ji for bringing out this book, The Harambi Factor, India-Africa Economic and Development Partnership. It's a deeply researched study on an important theme in our engagement with Africa. Now I would like to invite author of the book, Shri Gurjit Singh, to introduce the book. Ambassador Vijay Thakur Singh, Director General ICWA, thank you so much for arranging this wonderful event and the wonderful weather which allows us to be dressed properly for the occasion. <laughs> Mr. Harsh Shringla, former Foreign Secretary and G20 Coordinator, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it doesn't show up on his CV, but he and I got to know each other actually in Malawi when he went in 2010 when we had no mission there and ran the Vice President's visit with perfect ease leading me to believe that this man generally had a future. I think I was right. You had a bright future indeed. Uh, I thank uh, Mr. Damu Ravi, Secretary ER, most supportive. I must thank you. For a retired colleague to have the support of serving colleagues is indeed a big thing. And you and Rahul and many others I can see here. Thank you, Sevla, Raj Parohe. Thank you. Excellencies, thank you for being here. And I must recognize two people in particular who are part of my African journey. I see Jaya Jaitli Ji here. With her, we did that amazing Dastakari heart, people to people engagement of civil society. And I'm very happy that you found time to come today. It's in the book, the, this experience of the Dastakari heart. I also see General Rajinder Singh here. When I was ambassador in Ethiopia, he was the force commander of the United Nations force for Ethiopia and Eritrea. And this was one of the big occasions when India exhibited its soft path through the army. And thank you very much, sir, for being here. That's also in the book. And thank you for arranging this wonderful message from the Minister of State. All I can say is that almost everything he mentioned is in the book in great detail. <laughs> now. My book doesn't have much history. It is actually a 21st century account of what India and Africa did together. And around the time I first became Joint Secretary for Africa in 2001, we had only one Africa division. And we had only 18 African embassies at that time. And Africa came together to form NAPAD around the millennium. And then in 2002, Africa transitioned the OAU into the African Union. Now, in 2002, we were responding in many ways to Africa and coming up with common solutions. So in 2002, we first launched the Focus Africa program. And I, as a joint secretary, faced a huge protest from the African heads of mission because the program only undertook to cover eight countries, but everybody wanted to be covered. So we had to change that Focus Africa program and say, okay, we embrace everybody. The second thing we did was in this very hall, we had a three-day national seminar, which organized by ICWA and the Africa Division on Africa. So we brought domain experts from different aspects, which later became subjects of the India-Africa Forum Summit. But those domain experts came here and discussed with African ambassadors and high commissioners in this very hall, what could India and Africa do? Please remember, at that time, there is no Agenda 2063 to guide us. We are only looking at NAPAD, and we are looking at the formation of the African Union. Then. 
President Ward of Senegal invited us to the first NAPAD conference on private sector engagement. This is also 2002. And we went there with uh, Mr. Raman Singh, then the Minister of State for Commerce and Industry, later Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh. And for the first time, we took CII and Exim Bank with us out of their offices in Africa. This is the first time that an MEA delegation to Africa actually had these representatives with us. And after that, when we came back, we decided to have a meeting in Delhi of India's development finance partners in Africa. And this was organized for us by CII and Exim Bank. And this is still 2002. And the conclave, which is born in 2005, actually emanated from these meetings. These were the Ankur, the seedlings, which set in motion <coughs> a much bigger aspect. Then in 2002, the African Union is formed at the summit in Durban. I had the good fortune of representing India there. When we came back, the African deans, or the regional deans, together went to meet the foreign minister at that time, Mr. Yashwan Sinha. And at that meeting, the turn of India's foreign policy towards Africa was visible. Because the African ambassador said, this is what Africa intends to do now, take its destiny in its own hands. And the foreign minister said, when you are seeking your destiny, it is similar for us. In a post-Cold War world, all of us are seeking a new destiny. And this is what we are going to do together. So that partnership, the Harambe, was actually born when the African Union was created. Quickly jumping ahead, 2003-04, India announces the India Development Initiative, which today you all know as the lines of credit. That actually is born in March 2004. S same year, India does the first Team 9 with eight Central and West African countries and announces a regional initiative to provide funds for infrastructure development and capacity building. And in the same year, 2004, President Kalam went to Africa, South Africa and Tanzania. And at the Pan-African Parliament, he announced what is called today the Pan-African E-Network Project. In 2005, the African Union accepted to do that project. I had the good fortune to be the co-chair, along with the AU Commissioner for uh, Infrastructure, to implement that project, which first phase was completed in Ethiopia in 2009. And uh, then the project went on for about a decade before, as minister said, it was uh, replaced by the digital version of e Arogya Bharti and e Vidya Bharti. To conclude, in 2006, President Kunare, the chairman of the African Union, comes to India after the Banjul summit, where he has announced that he will seek new partnerships for Africa. And the first partnership he seeks is India. And he comes to India, and in the room down the corridor here, he, the conference room, he sat with intellectuals gathered together by ICWA and discussed. And he realized that India was so, so willing to engage with Africa. So he, when he went to a meeting with President Kalam and Foreign Minister Pranam Mukherjee and MOS Anand Sharma, the India-Africa summit was born. The rest, please read in the book. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'd like to request dignitaries on the stage to launch the book.
Now I would like to invite Shri Harshwardhan Shingla, Chief Coordinator for G20 Summit and former Foreign Secretary to deliver his remarks. Ambassador Vijay Thakur Singh, Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, Shri Damu Ravi, Secretary the Ministry of External Affairs, who has uh, charge, uh, he also looks after Africa specifically. Ambassador Rahul Chabra, one of our colleagues uh, uh, in the ministry, uh, and also secretary looked after Africa. Um, ambassadors, uh, members of the diplomatic corps, see a lot of our senior colleagues who are here, but I'm also happy to see many of our Joint Secretaries and other officers dealing with Africa who are present on this occasion, distinguished guests, friends. Uh, let me begin by congratulating, now formally congratulating Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, my good friend, uh, former colleague, for the launch of his uh, monograph on Africa, the Rambi Factor. I say monograph because it is really a very comprehensive analysis, assessment of India's relations with Africa in the last two decades after the turn of the century. Now, uh, in the Indian Foreign Service, uh, we talk about specialization. Uh, we believe that officers should specialize uh, to the extent that they can, and we attach high priority to that specialization. But it's not always possible. There are contradictory factors at work. One, of course, is that we also want you to be a generalist. We want you to have broad exposure of different regions in the world. And of course, uh, you know, it's always difficult when you have a rotation policy between different regions of the world uh, based on certain considerations such as schooling, uh, medical and other factors to be able to constantly specialize in one region. But uh, if there is one of our colleagues who has succeeded in specializing uh, to, uh, to an extent that is, uh, that is admirable, uh, it is that of uh, Master Gurjeet Singh. And as he correctly pointed out, uh, Soon after the turn of the century, he was appointed uh, Joint Secretary Africa. Uh, he um, worked on our Africa relationship for a number of years and then went out to become a master in Ethiopia. He went to several places, if I'm not mistaken. Ten years later, a decade back, he comes back and he is again Joint Secretary Africa. But this time, Africa is in two parts. You have uh, Central and West Africa and you had South and East Africa. And Gurjeet became the Joint Secretary of South and East Africa. But the fact is that he knew exactly what he was doing. He was uh, posted in Kenya as Deputy High Commissioner. He has served as, uh, had served as Joint Secretary, served as Ambassador in the region, and he had a level of expertise that uh, few in the ministry could match. And I think that held us in good stead in those very, very important years of which he is writing in his book. He is right also to say that he, uh, soon after I came back from my posting in South Africa, uh, I was uh, waiting to be assigned uh, to a division. Uh, he said, why don't you work on some of the issues that we are dealing with, uh, get, go back to Africa. So that's how I ended up in Malawi. I think I was there for over a month uh, to prepare for the Vice President's visit. We didn't have a mission there that time. It was a great experience and an exposure to a part of Africa that I uh, cherish. Uh, he also, he may not recall, but he also sent me to uh, Mozambique uh, during the visit of our uh, Minister of State, uh, uh, that time she, Shashi Tharoor. Uh, before the visit, he said, uh, uh, the ambassador had been called to Delhi. Uh, he had to attend some very important training courses. So I went and prepared the ground. And again, an incredible experience. And thank you, Gurjeet, for that exposure to Africa that only you could give uh, any of your colleagues. Um, I think the uh, fact of the importance of our relationship with Africa has been brought out in the minister's very comprehensive remarks. Uh, there are two, three points I want to stress on. The first, of course, is that uh, ever since... Uh, the government of Prime Minister Modi came in, there has been a renewed emphasis, or rather an emphasis on relations with Africa. And I'm, I'm not saying it uh, other than to be able to um, give you the facts that uh, corroborate uh, what I'm saying. One, of course, is that, as, as uh, the Minister of State pointed out, that the number of visits that we have had to Africa has been uh, unprecedented. But not only that, I think uh, we have been able to cover each and every country in Africa by a high-level visit. 
Now that is, uh, that certainly is a departure from the past because many countries in Africa had, had never experienced a visit from India. So since 2014, we have had every country in Africa covered at least by a ministerial level visit. Now why are these visits important? Uh, they're important not just for the symbolic value of having a high level presence, but because they are able to bring together high level attention onto the relationship. They're able to bring together the opportunity to make decisions and provide advice and guidance on that relationship, and I think that has served us well. The second factor is uh, in terms of the Ministry of External Affairs, we have taken a policy decision to have a resident mission in as many African countries as possible, in fact, if not all African countries. And today, uh, we have covered most of Africa, specifically Central and West Africa uh, has, been, uh, has been the focus. Uh, we today have missions in uh, a number of countries in that part of the region which has not been very, very uh, well uh, covered in terms of our diplomatic uh, engagement. The third, as the minister pointed out, is a very high focus on extending concessional lines of credit uh, to Africa. Uh, he spoke, I think, about uh, between 12 and 14 billion dollars uh, under implementation. And the fact of the matter is that these lines of credit are based, are needs based. It is based on the requirements of the recipient. Uh, if you think that uh, agriculture is important, we focus on agriculture. If you think water supply is important, we focus on that. If it's power generation, then we focus on that. So it is needs based. In certain countries, we've put up conference centers. In certain countries, there have been stadiums. But essentially, uh, lines of credit are available to countries uh, on highly concessional terms. And I, we believe that this is an important way to accelerate development uh, in Africa um, as part of our India-Africa cooperation. But it's not just the lines of credit. It also grants in aid that go into specific projects that are of importance. And those are more in the socioeconomic sector, where there is a people-oriented focus. So I think these are important, and I'm sure in the panel discussion and uh, what uh, Secretary Dambura will conduct, uh, what uh, Secretary Rahul Chawla will conduct, I think these uh, would bring out many of the uh, aspects of uh, what has been spoken about in terms of the renewed and very strong emphasis on the relationship uh, with Africa. Um, we, of course, uh, if you look at uh, our broader strategy, when you talk about the Indo-Pacific, and there's a lot of focus and attention on the Indo-Pacific strategy today, uh, it was, I think, U.S. Uh, Defense Secretary General Mattis who, in describing the geographical range of the Indo-Pacific, said it's, it extends from Hollywood to Bollywood. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what he was trying to say is that it, it extends from the western shores of the United States, from the, from the United States to, uh, to the western shores of India. Uh, we said no. We believe that the Indo-Pacific should cover Africa and that, uh, that uh, our version and our concept of the Indo-Pacific really is from Africa to the United States. Uh, if you do not include Africa in this vision, the Indo-Pacific, then it is not a complete coverage of what we believe is the Indo-Pacific region. And today we have a broad sense that it really covers the East Coast, the littoral of Eastern littoral of Africa right up to the United States. And, uh, and I think that is uh, an important area of our focus, our emphasis, which does not mean that we are not covering the rest of Africa. It just means that the Indo-Pacific, when we, when we work with our partners, it covers that area. But our own focus is on covering the entire uh, uh, continent of Africa, uh, both bilaterally in terms of regions, in terms of regional groupings, and of course in terms of the African Union. Uh, we have a very good model in the India-Africa Forum Summit uh, that provides uh, a broad framework on which uh, we uh, meet at the highest levels, but we have many other engagements which also help us significantly. Now, as we uh, enter uh, as we take on the presidency of the G20 from the 1st of December this year, I think you have to keep in mind that the G20 has always focused on economic and financial issues mainly. Some of the very important decisions in recent years is the debt service suspension initiative. That's very important for Africa because many countries, because of the COVID crisis, were not able to service the debts. There was a moratorium on uh, debt repayment till the end of 2021, which is a very important indicator for the rest of the world to go on including us. Uh, we also uh, took, a, the G20 took a decision to, uh, on taxation of uh, multi, multinational uh, companies. I think that again is an important factor in providing uh, a more equitable uh, playing field, uh, ensuring that multinationals, uh, wherever they are, have the onus of taxation continues to be on them. And, and of course, many other decisions. But I think what is important, and I think this is borne out during the COVID crisis, Minister brought it out also, is that our focus 
during the worst of the COVID crisis, and again here, uh, Damu and Vijay and many of us have worked together on this issue, has been not just on ourselves, but on our uh, partners, our friends, uh, and uh, our developing uh, partners throughout the world, uh, that specifically Africa. I think there was a spe special emphasis on ensuring that medicines such as uh, hydroxychloroquine, uh, remdesivir, and later uh, made in India vaccines under vaccine Maitri reached Africa. Vaccines uh, reached Africa under uh, COVAX, but also bilaterally. Uh, so uh, health is an important aspect of that cooperation, but also coming forward when uh, you need uh, that assistance, whether it is uh, uh, you know, a cyclone that hit uh, Mozambique, uh, our ships were there, whether it was uh, requirements in Seychelles or in different parts of Africa, we were ready to assist uh, with that requirement. So uh, in many senses, a first responder as we have. Uh, I want to just conclude by two aspects. One, of course, is that what is the, uh, how do we take the relationship uh, with uh, our friends in Africa forward in terms of the, in, in the coming years, uh, in the next couple of decades. I think that is an important factor that we need to consider even in the panel discussions that you would have. Uh, but clearly, uh, we are looking at much more enhanced partnerships and cooperations in uh, our approach towards Africa. I'll give you one example. Uh, we are working with many, we've already been working with the United States and, and Japan, but also with many other European partners in uh, joint uh, outreach to Africa. In other words, uh, one of the examples I can give you is when Prime Minister Boris Johnson, the UK, came to India recently, we signed an agreement that would allow us what is called a global partnership. Um, the UK had undertaken various socioeconomic schemes in India, which are basically, uh, which utilize uh, uh, young startups to look at socioeconomic solutions, whether it's water, whether it is uh, waste disposal, whether it is sanitation. These are solutions that are developed through these startups and then implemented on the ground. These are not large projects, these are small projects that have high impact on communities. The successful projects are being taken into other partner countries, including Africa. And uh, essentially, if they are successfully implemented on the ground, then they are commercialized and then they take on, then uh, governments don't get involved, they're taken forward. But the initial seed money comes from government and we want to work with our partners, uh, whether it is France, whether it's the UK, whether it's the European Union or Germany, in Africa and other, in other parts of the world, developing world, where uh, that difference can be made in terms of uh, socioeconomic development. The last point is that you know, when you look at uh, the global scenario, uh, the last continent that really has the potential to exponentially move forward in development and growth terms is Africa. And I think here is the focus. I mean, if we have to really focus somewhere, it should be on Africa. And I'm very happy that uh, Gurjeet has brought out this book at this critical juncture. Uh, earlier, Raj Master Rajiv Bhatia had also released his book on Africa. This is uh, a right time for us to start looking at Africa, to start considering this very important uh, partnership uh, that we in India uh, should regard. And uh, while saying this, I also want to uh, wish uh, Master Gurjeet Singh all the very best in a very successful continuation of his uh, Africa policy uh, and, uh, and thank the ICWA for giving this opportunity for this very valuable discussion on Africa and the one that preceded it. Uh, and of course, uh, we uh, will look forward to the panel discussion that would throw light in more detail on a very, very important relationship. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. This concludes the book launch. On behalf of ICWA, I would like to thank Honorable Minister of State, Shri V. Murlidharan, Shri Harsh Singla, Shri Damu Ravi, and Shri Gurjit Singh. I would like to thank African diplomatic community for their presence here. Now I would like to request Shri Damu Ravi and Ambassador Gurjit Singh to remain seated on the stage. And I would like to request uh, Shri Pramit Pal Chaudhary and Pranav Kumar to take their seats on the stage.